Nathan Sunna here. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down before God our King. Come, let us worship and bow, bow down before Christ our God our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Him, Christ our King and God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are magnified exceedingly. You clothe yourself with thanksgiving and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You are he who covers up his upper chambers with water, who makes the clouds his means of approach, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits and his, and his ministers a flame of fire. He established the earth on its stable foundation. It shall not be moved unto the ages of ages. The deep like a garment is, is his covering. The waters shall stand upon the mountains. At your rebuke they shall flee. At the sound of your thunder they shall be afraid. The mountains rise up and the plains sink down to the place you founded for them. You set a boundary they shall not pass over, neither shall they return to cover the earth. You are he who sends springs into the valley, the waters shall pass between the mountains. They shall, not, they shall give drink to all the wild animals of the field. The wild asses shall quench their thirst, the birds of heaven shall dwell beside them. They shall sing from the midst of the rocks. You are he who waters the mountains from his higher places. The earth shall be satisfied with the fruit of your works. You are he who causes grass to grow for the cattle and the green plant for the service of man, to bring forth bread from the earth and wine gladdens the heart of man, to brighten his face with oil and bread strengthens man's heart. The trees of the plain shall be full of fruit, the cedars of Lebanon which you planted. Their sparrows shall make their nests. The house of the heron takes the lead among them. The high mountains are for the deer, the cliff is a refuge for the rabbits. He made the moon for seasons, the sun knows its setting. You established darkness and it was night, wherein all the wild animals of the forest will prowl about. The young lions roar and snatch their prey and seek their food from God. The sun arises and they are gathered together and they shall be put to, the, to bed in their dens. Man shall go out to his work and to his labor until evening. O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. The earth was filled with your creation. There is a great and spacious sea. The creeping things are there without number. The living things are there, both small and great. There ships pass through. There is this dragon you formed to play therein. All things wait upon you, that you may give them food in due season. When you give it to them, they shall gather it. When you open your hand, all things shall be filled with your goodness. But when you, return, when you turn your face away, they shall be troubled. When you take away their breath, they shall die and return again to their dust. You shall send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. 
Let the glory of the Lord be forever. The Lord shall be glad in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it tremble. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing to my God as long as I exist. May my words be pleasing to him, and I shall be glad in the Lord. May sinners cease, cease from the earth, and the lawless so as to be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The sun knows its setting. You established darkness, and it was night. O Lord, your works shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Our hope, O Lord, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy house for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For pious and orthodox Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Sava, for the Honorable Presbyterate, for the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, for the president, for, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. for abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, for the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. from all affliction, wrath, danger, necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, I have cried out to you. Hear me, oh, okay. hear, hear me, O oh Lord. Lord, I have cried out to you.
to page 12. If you, O Lord, should mark transgressions, O Lord, who would stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Come, let us rejoice in the Lord as we tell about this mystery. The middle wall of separation has been broken down. The fiery sword has turned back. The cherubim permits access to the tree of life. And I partake of the delight of paradise from which I was cast out because of disobedience. For the exact image of the Father, the express image of His eternity, takes the form of a servant coming forth from a virgin mother, and he undergoes no change. He remained what he was, true God, and he took up what he was not, becoming human in his love for humanity. Let us cry out to him, you who were born from a virgin, O oh God, have mercy on us. From the morning watch until night, from the warm morning watch until night, let Israel hope in the Lord. Since the Lord Jesus was born of the Holy Virgin, the universe has been illumined. Shepherds were keeping watch, and magi were adorning him. And angels were singing praises, and Herod was troubled. For God appeared in the flesh, yes, 
one single rule. And the nations came to believe in one God. The peoples were enrolled by decree of Caesar. We the faithful were enrolled in the name of the Godhead. When you became man of Christ, our God, great is your mercy, Lord, glory to you. Ooh. Wisdom, let us attend. Oh, from the book of Genesis. Wisdom, let us be attentive. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth. The earth was invisible and unfinished, and darkness was over the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw, God saw the light, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and morning, one day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it divide the water from water. And it was so. Thus God made the firmament, and God divided the water under the firmament from the water above the firmament. So God called the firmament heaven, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and morning, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. The water under heaven was gathered into its places, and the dry land appeared. So God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the herb of grass, bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. Let the fruit tree bear fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind on earth. It was so. Thus the earth brought forth the herb of grass, bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. The fruit tree bore, bore fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind on the earth. God saw that it was good. So evening and morning were the third day. O Savior, you were secretly born in the cave, and having used the star as a mouth and announced you to all, it brought to you the Magi who worshipped you with faith, Together with them have mercy on us. His foundations are in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Que magus y prosinengen, en pisti proskinunda se methon eleisonimas. Ma 
Magici, Rossi, Nenger, e Pesti, Proschi, Nundece, Metto nelle sogni mari. And behold, foreigners and the people of Tyre and Ethiopia, he brought to you the Magi, who worship you with faith, together with them have mercy on us. The Lord shall describe it in a written account of the peoples of the rulers of those who were born in her. It brought to you the Magi who worshipped you with faith. Together with them, have mercy on us. Wisdom, let us be attentive. <laughs> Εγώ βαρ έξω ειρήνη και επί της άρχοντας ειρήνη και Αγία και μεγάλης η αρχή αυτού και η ειρήνη αυτού ούκε έστι όριο. Επί των θρόνων Δαβίδ και επί της βασιλείας αυτού κατεχώσε αυτή και αντιλαβήστε αυτή το χρήματι και δικαιοσύνη από του νυν και εις το αιών. Ο τήλος Κυρίου και Σαββαών φύση you rose from the virgin of Christ, the noetic son of righteousness, and a star pointed to you, the uncontainable contained in a cave. It led the magi to worship you, and with them we magnify you, O giver of life, glory to you. <laughs> Dynamy ke periodos. Ma gusto di isa i proskenetse su metote megalino me zodota doxas. And he established the world which shall not be moved. Your throne is prepared from of old. You are from everlasting. He led the Magi to worship you, and with them we magnify you, O giver of life, glory to you. Epiran ipotami kirie, epise ke potami ponis apton, uranion, en potami epistreptis. Magus oti yisat, is proskini sisu, metose megalino me, because of the voices of their many waters, marvelous are the billows of the sea. Wondrous is the Lord on high. Your testimonies are very much believed. It led the Magi to worship you, and with them we magnify you, O giver of life, glory to you. <laughs> Is my crotitan imero, 
Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. You rose from the Virgin, O Christ, the noetic Son of Righteousness, and a star pointed to you. The uncontainable contained in a cave. It led the Magi to worship you, and with them we magnify you, O giver of life. Glory to you. Ooh. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Moreover, the Lord added this to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary the Lord also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey he shall eat before he knows to prefer evil or choose the good. For before the child knows good or evil, he refuses the evil to choose the good. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Take for yourself a large new book, and write on it with a man's pen concerning making a swift plunder of spoils, for it is near at hand. Then make witnesses for me of faithful men, Uriah and Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son, and the Lord said to me, Call his name, quickly despoil, swiftly plunder, for before the child shall know how to call his father and mother, one shall take the power of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria in the presence of the king of Assyria. O God with us, know this, O Gentiles, and be defeated. Give ear, all you, to the very ends of the earth. Be defeated, although you are strong, for even if you should be strong again, you will be defeated again. Then too, whatever counsel you take, the Lord will scatter it abroad. And whatever word you shall speak, it will not continue among you, for the Lord God is with us. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Wisdom. The reading is from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. In many and various ways God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also he created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained it is more excellent than theirs. For, for to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into, into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and the, his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever the righteous scepter. It is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness beyond thy comrades. And thou, Lord, didst found the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They will perish, but thou remainest, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a mantle that will roll them up, and they will be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years will never end. Peace be to you who has read to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom arise, let us live.
listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there was a shepherd out of the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known this saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told. Oh, them. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Let us all say with our soul and with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Archbishop and Father Sava. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our brethren, the priests, the hiero monks, the hiero deacons, the monastics, and all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all pious and orthodox Christians, residing and visiting in this city, the parishioners, the members of the parish council, the stewards, and benefactors of this holy church. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and everable memorable founders of this holy church, and for all our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep before us, who here have been piously laid to rest, as well as the Orthodox everywhere. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bear fruit and do good works, 
in this holy and all venerable church for those who labor and for those who sing and for all the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You are a merciful God who loves mankind and to you we offer up glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name to the ages. Amen. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, for we have set our hope in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, Master, grant me understanding of your commandments. Blessed are you, Holy One, enlighten me with your commandments. Lord, your mercy is forever. Do not despise the work of your hands. To you is due praise, to you is due song, to you is due glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. For the pardon and the remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. For that which is good and beneficial for our souls and for peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord and let us ask for a Christian end to our life, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. God, our good and love mankind, and to you we offer glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be to all. Amen. with your spirit. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. of your kingdom be blessed and glorified of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. A great and paradoxical miracle has taken place today. A virgin has given birth and there is no damage to her womb. The Word became flesh, and He is not separated from the Father. Angels and shepherds give glory, and we join them in shouting. Glory in the highest to God, and on earth let there be Peace be 
ποτιζόμενοι και ποιμένε σύνδο το θάμα. Αν κέλο να νυμνούντο και λεγόντο, δόξα ενυψίστη Θεό. I have begotten you from the womb before the morning star. The Lord swore and will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. When the Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi came from the east, and they worshipped God become man. They readily opened their treasures, and they offered him precious gifts, pure gold to the king of the ages, incense to the God of all, and myrrh to the immortal one, who would die for the ages. Come, all nations, let us worship him who was born to save our souls. Lord, glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all you who love Zion, celebrate. Today the age-old bond of the condemnation of Adam has been released. Paradise is open to us, the serpent is neutralized. He deceived a woman in paradise of old, but now he sees a woman become the mother of the Creator. What profound riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, woman who became the instrument of sin and who brought death to all flesh, has now through the Theotokos become the beginning of salvation for the world. For all the perfect God is born as an infant from her, and in birth he preserves her virginity, and being wrapped in swaddling clothes, he breaks the chains of sins, becoming an infant, he heals the labor pains of Eve, therefore
Kalispera. Good evening. In modern literature and in the modern political scene, what was chanted a few moments ago could have been seen as very disrespectful to women. You heard basically that Eve was the gateway of evil. So just hearing that would say, uh oh, there goes the church again beating up on women. But that's not the case. It is a very clear historical fact that there was a presentation that took place where the dark angel Lucifer presented himself and spoke to Eve and convinced Eve to be disobedient to God. And then Eve turned to Adam. Adam was shocked. And then she convinced Adam, and Adam participated with her. Therefore, both violated God's commandment. Now, to be fair, yes, maybe Eve was weak, for sure. But where was Adam's strength? Can you imagine the story, how different it could be if Adam said, wait a minute, what did you just do? And then step back and did not participate. But you see, he couldn't. Why? Because Eve came from him. Man and woman are intrinsically united. You'll forgive the phrase, they attract one another to each other. Because we are of one flesh. Remember the story of creation? God took earth, and spittle, and he made man. And then he realized that it's not good for man to be alone on the earth, so what did he do? He put Adam to sleep, and then he took from Adam a rib, and he made woman. Because the title woman means she who was taken out of the man. Now, what's the benefit of this story? Well, I'm not saying it to make people feel better. There has to be something here. Just like evil came with a set pattern, there was also a set pattern that God came to restore not just humanity, but all of creation. You see, it wasn't that Adam and Eve alone did a boo-boo. That boo-boo? ruined everything. It turned the animal kingdom upside down. And then the animals started fighting one another, started consuming one another, and even started attacking man. Adam and Eve were kicked out of paradise. Why? Because that which was made whole and beautiful had now become had now become weak, broken, and empty. The consequence of sin, Adam had to spend his life in labor and toil, sweating and working hard. Eve would bear children with pain. I share this all with you because in the whole story of salvation, God had a plan. You see, if God didn't have a plan, then what would happen? It would only be by choice, or another word, chance, that things would become normalized and things would become better. Nope. Because God is so loving and so unconditional in his love, the consequences to disobedience had to take place. We, when we do a boo-boo, don't want any consequences. We want to be forgiven. We beg, please forgive me. And we are forgiven. But the consequences are an exercise to remind us not to do it again. You remember I told you a couple weeks ago 
that when I was cooking in the kitchen as a young child, my mom would say, keep your fingers from the fire. And how did I translate that? Stick your finger in the fire. <laughs> and so like, I wanted to see how hot it was. And ultimately, once I burned myself, well, what was the consequence? A blister. And plus, I had to hear the nagging. But nonetheless, there had to be a consequence. If there was no consequence to me to stick my finger in the fire, I would do it again. So God established a consequence for disobedience. But he also had the restorative medicine. And that is that in the prophets, God made very clear that there would be a second Eve. And this Eve, born of natural means, not as taught by other Christian faiths, born immaculately, in other words, coming from without human seed, and thus sinless, she came from elderly parents who were past the years of childbirth. I think you understand that after a certain age, biologically, you're really not desirous to, have, to bear children. You're kind of like looking into, okay, now they're all grown up, want to have grandchildren, that's great. And what do we say about parents or grandparents with their uh, grandchildren? They love them twice as much as their children because there's a beginning of a visit and there's an end of a visit. So being in their early 80s, Biologically, the parents of the mother of God weren't in physical condition to bear a child, but that's beyond the comprehension of man because God so willed that they would bear a child, a daughter named Mariam, and she would be the one to be the second Eve because she would be obedient to God. And as we know in the story, later on, after she comes out of the temple, after living there for 12 years, from the year three years old to 15, she was betrothed to a very honorable man who was a widower. His name was Joseph. Now I'm going to confess to you. I get really upset when I see movies pictures, religious pictures, or themes that present the ever-Virgin Mary as a young woman, no problem, but this very handsome Joseph, this really young Joseph, about maybe 24, no more than 30, because then that puts in our mind, well, this is a young couple, and okay, there was a virgin birth, but afterwards, they lived a normal physical life as husband and wife. That's not the case. So Some people say, well, wait a minute. The Bible says that Jesus was in a house in Capernaum and he was teaching and someone said, well, your mother and your brothers and sisters are waiting for you outside. So they say, you see, Joseph had to be a young man because Jesus had brothers and sisters. Jesus did not have brothers and sisters from the ever-Virgin Mary. So who were they? The children of the elder Joseph, because he was a widower. If we have a second Eve, do we have a second Adam? If God gave us a second Eve, is there a second Adam? And why do we need a second Adam? Well, why not? Because everything was created perfect for Adam and Eve to be our great, 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 etc. grandparents, and they blew it. So how does God restore nature? God became the second Adam. In the second person of the Holy Trinity, where the Father willed and sent the Son. And Jesus became the second Adam. And Jesus
Jesus restores creation. How do we respond? Wow, we're so excited that the earth gave a cave, the magi gave gifts, we give praise, the angels sing. That's where we get the idea, by the way, of giving presents at a birth. It comes from Jesus' birth. I'll take a little side road here for a moment, because every road in Pennsylvania has an exit. Let me give you this little exit. There's two ways of giving gifts. The traditional, we have to give a gift to so-and-so because it's their birthday. Or we have to give a gift because it's Christmas. Bad idea. Many times, almost all the time, when we give gifts because we have to, what's missing is love. And we're just trying to fulfill an obligation with a dollar sign, with a value. The best type of gift to give is a gift of gratitude, appreciation. The earth appreciated God restoring it. It gave a cave. The angels appreciated the restoration of creation. They gave a hymn. The magi brought gifts, gold for a king, frankincense because Jesus is God, and myrrh to prepare for his death. For this Adam, unlike the first, was set to die. But his death was but a moment and temporary. Because with the second Adam's death was the repentance of all humanity being brought together to God. And he went into Hades, preached, the good news, and resurrected from the dead. And in him we have life. That's the beautiful meaning of the nativity. This is the reason for Christmas. So our presence this evening is our appreciation to God. Our presence tomorrow is to go like the animals. And what do animals do when they're in their stable and they're hungry? They what? Eat. Do you know when they go to eat, they eat out of a certain container? Do you happen to know what the name of that container is? It's a French word that we use in English. Manger. But wait a minute. In the songs and in the story, we hear that Jesus was born and what? Laid in a manger. Animals eat out of a manger. That means that in the second Adam, in the person of Christ, the way we commune with God is to partake of him, his precious body and blood. We're not animals. We are made in his image and likeness. So when we sing that song, Away oh, in a manger, and other songs that refer to a manger, what we're basically saying very clearly is this. Jesus, Come, that we may consume of him and be one in him. So when we come to worship, not just tomorrow, but every liturgy, we come in appreciation. In appreciation for the fact that he has restored us. He's taken our boo-boo finger and he made it better. He's taken us and he's made us holy again. Restored us. What do we have to offer him? But our own repentance. So that he may dwell in us forever.
<clears throat> Lord, now let you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All together, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All together, Christians together with the Holy Church in this city forever. Amen. 
greater in honor than the cherubim and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim. Without corruption, you gave birth to God the Word. Truly the mother of God, we magnify you. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to the ages of ages, amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father bless. May he who was born in a cave and lay in a manger for our salvation, Christ our true God, through the intercession of his all pure and all immaculate Holy Mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, of the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostles, of the holy glorious and triumphant martyrs, of our righteous and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and righteous answers of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints have mercy on us and save us for his good and loves mankind. Uh, through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Please be seated. It is our tradition at the end of the Nativity Vespers to gather together and sing a few carols, and we have them for you. If you don't have enough in your pew, obviously there are some empty pews and there are carols around for you to share so everyone can have one. Now, I really would like the joy of standing here with Father Dragan and with a few of you as well. So, you remember the rule, I'll just wait here and then if I feel like I'm really alone, then I'm going to get up and walk through the aisles and I'm going to pick people. So, it's really simple. Who would like to come join us? I'm waiting. Oh, I see people moving. Either they're running for the doors or coming forward. <laughs> awesome. Bravo. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Father Dragan, while we're gathering together, tomorrow morning, Orthros <laughs> and Divine Liturgy begin at 9 a.m. The choir will be here to sing with us, and then we will send you off home to fully begin celebrating. If you haven't already decided on what you're eating tonight, still a fast night, so we encourage you to do so. After liturgy tomorrow, enjoy. No fasting until January 5th, starting tomorrow. So that means every day, including Wednesdays and Fridays, until January 5th are no fastings. And then on the 5th, strict fast day, so we can prepare for the epiphany of the Lord, which we honor his baptism. So, welcome team, nice to have you. I think the clergy will be in the, in the middle this time. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to do first our favorite Greek carol, Kalina Espera Archondes, and then we're going to go into those good old favorite ones that we're used to. Kalina Espera Archondes, Yani. Yanine orismosas, Christu titian genisit. Napo, napo star condicosas, Christos genate simeron. Envi, envi flem di poli, i urania galonde. Yeri, Eripisi soli endos pileo dictete Enfa, enfa niton alogon o vasilevston uranon Kepi, kepi tiston olon plithos angelon salusi todo so doxa en ipsistis, que tu ton axion esti. I ton, I ton pimenon pistis. By the way, this is not the whole carol. The whole carol is a very, well, just like the Greek national anthem, has I think 156 strophes, this is a very long uh, carol. 
We just gave you a synopsis of what we normally do when we gather to the home. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him rule. And heaven and nature seek, and heaven and nature seek, and heaven and heaven and nature seek. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Have you noticed something? They're singing just as loud as we are. I think they should lead the next one. All right? On the count of three. One, two, three. Are the heroes in the I've heard in all these years. Everyone, let's stand and we'll sing Silent Night together. We'll sing the first and the last verse as we have, and then we will bid you a good night to be at peace and to enjoy the blessings of God.
Merry Christmas, Kalachrishuyina, Blessed Nativity.